I, 35 female, have been married to my husband Dave, 37 male, for almost 10 years now. We've had our ups and downs like any couple, but overall, we're a solid team. One of the downs, though, has been my relationship with Dave's younger sister, Amanda, 30 female. To put it simply, Amanda and I have never gotten along. It's not for lack of trying on my part. I've always been cordial, tried to be supportive, and kept the peace for the sake of the family harmony. But Amanda has always had a bit of an attitude toward me. To her, I've always been the competition. She's incredibly vain, constantly worried about how she looks compared to others, and she makes everything into a weird one-sided rivalry. For example, when Dave and I got married, she tried to outdo me by wearing a white dress to our wedding, claiming it was just a pretty dress. I let it go at the time because I didn't want to cause drama on my big day, but it left a sour taste in my mouth. Over the years, Amanda's jabs and passive-aggressive comments have piled up, from criticizing my style to making underhanded remarks about how I got lucky with my career. I run a successful small business from home. She's never missed an opportunity to subtly, or not so subtly, tear me down. Dave has always been supportive of me, but he's the type to avoid confrontation, especially with his family. I've learned to brush off Amanda's pettiness for the sake of keeping peace with my husband's family, but recent events have taken things to a whole new level. A few months ago, Amanda got engaged to her boyfriend, Ethan, 32 male, and of course, the family was thrilled. I was genuinely happy for her and hoped this new chapter in her life would lead to some growth and maturity. Little did I know, this wedding would become the source of one of the biggest family dramas I've ever been involved in. When Amanda announced her engagement, she was immediately overwhelmed with planning. I tried to offer my help, but she brushed me off, saying she had everything under control. That's fine. I thought, brides often want to plan their weddings without too much outside input. I didn't think much of it. But then, a few weeks later, Amanda came to me and Dave with a huge favor to ask. She wanted to have her wedding at our house. Now, here's some context. Dave and I own a beautiful property just outside the city. We've got a large, well-maintained garden, a spacious yard, and the house itself is charming, with a picturesque view that would make for a perfect wedding venue. We've hosted a few events here before, like family barbecues and birthday parties, so it's no surprise that Amanda thought of our place as an ideal wedding spot. At first, I was hesitant. Hosting a wedding is a huge deal, and it would require a lot of preparation and work on our part. But Dave was on board, and Amanda assured us it would be a small, intimate gathering. She also promised that she'd take care of most of the logistics and planning, so it wouldn't be a huge burden on us. I reluctantly agreed, thinking that maybe this could be a way to finally mend our relationship and put all the petty drama behind us. That hope of reconciliation didn't last long. Over the next few weeks, I noticed something strange. Every time Amanda came over to discuss wedding details, she only ever talked to Dave. I was left out of the loop entirely. If I tried to ask questions or offer suggestions, she would smile politely and say, Oh, don't worry about it. We've got it handled. At first, I chalked it up to Amanda's usual control freak tendencies, but then it started to feel deliberate. Dave would be invited to meetings with caterers and photographers, but I wasn't even told about them until after the fact. She was planning her wedding at my house, and I was being kept completely in the dark. The final straw came when I overheard a conversation between Amanda and her maid of honor during one of her planning visits. They didn't realize I was in the next room, and her maid of honor asked Amanda how is she going to tell me that I'm not invited to the wedding, especially since the wedding was going to take place at my house. Amanda's response was something I'll never forget. She said, I don't know yet, but I'm planning to let her know just a couple days before the wedding so she doesn't have a chance to ruin my day and make a big drama. You know how she is. She's always so put together, and honestly, I can't risk her outshining me on my big day. Can you imagine? I don't want all the attention to be on her instead of me. It's my wedding, and she just has this way of showing off. I was floored. It wasn't just the fact that she didn't want me involved. It was the reason behind it. She didn't want me at her wedding because she thought I'd somehow outshine her. I didn't ask to host her wedding at my house. She did. And now she was treating me like some kind of pariah just because she was insecure? The sheer pettiness of it all blew my mind. I waited for the conversation to end and went straight to Dave. I told him what I had overheard, expecting him to be as outraged as I was. But instead, he just sighed and said, You know how Amanda is. She's probably just stressed out. Don't take it personally. 
I couldn't believe he was downplaying this. Amanda wasn't just excluding me. She was actively insulting me while planning to use my home as the backdrop for her big day. I decided that I wasn't going to take it sitting down anymore. A few days later, I tried to have a calm conversation with Amanda. I told her I'd overheard what she said and explained that I felt disrespected, especially since I'd graciously agreed to let her use my home for her wedding. She just gave me a condescending smile and said, Oh, I didn't mean it like that. I just think weddings should be about the bride, you know, and you have such a strong presence. I just don't want anything distracting from me on my day. Her complete lack of remorse or self-awareness made my blood boil. I told her that if she felt that way, she could find another venue for her wedding. She acted shocked and accused me of overreacting, saying I was being selfish and making it all about me. But here's the thing. It was my house. I was bending over backward to accommodate her, and she couldn't even offer me the basic courtesy of including me in her plans. She didn't seem to grasp that I wasn't just some third party in this situation. I was the one providing the venue, the space, and the time. And yet, she wanted to treat me like an inconvenience because she was insecure about her own wedding. That's when I made my decision. I decided I wasn't going to let her walk all over me. She thought she could exclude me from my own home and then waltz in and use it for her perfect, insta-worthy wedding. Absolutely not. So I took matters into my own hands. I called a locksmith and had the locks on the house changed. I didn't tell David first because I knew he'd try to stop me. But I was done being the nice sister-in-law who let everyone take advantage of her. Amanda had made her choice to treat me like I didn't matter, so now she could find somewhere else to get married. The next day, Amanda showed up with a few of her wedding planners to do another walkthrough of the house. She rang the doorbell, and I calmly opened the door and told her that she was no longer welcome to host her wedding here. She looked at me like I had just slapped her in the face. What are you talking about? She asked, clearly shocked. I'm saying you need to find another venue, I responded. This is my home, and you've made it clear that you don't want me involved. So I'm taking myself and my house out of the equation. She went ballistic. She started yelling, calling me selfish, petty, and saying I was ruining her wedding. I stayed calm and told her that her disrespect was the reason this was happening. If she didn't want me at the wedding because she was afraid I'd outshine her, she could figure out another place to have it. She left in a rage, calling Dave to tell him what had happened. Dave, of course, was furious with me at first. He said I was overreacting and that I should have just let Amanda have her day. But I stood my ground. I explained to him how I have been treated, how I have been excluded from the planning, and how Amanda had insulted me behind my back. I told him that I wasn't going to be walked all over in my own home. Eventually, Dave calmed down and realized how hurt I had been. He admitted that Amanda's behavior was out of line, but he was still upset that I didn't talk to him before changing the locks. We had a long conversation about boundaries and how his family's dynamic had affected our marriage, and he eventually understood where I was coming from. Amanda, however, didn't back down. She refused to apologize, and instead, she went on a smear campaign, telling the entire family that I had ruined her wedding. She conveniently left out the part where she had excluded me from my own home because of her insecurities. My phone was blowing up with calls from family members, asking why I couldn't just let Amanda have her day. Some of them tried to guilt trip me, saying that I was overreacting and being cruel, while others, who knew Amanda's personality, quietly supported me. The wedding, of course, was moved to another location. Last I heard, they were scrambling to book a venue that would accommodate them on short notice, and it wasn't going to be nearly as picturesque as my home. I've been labeled the difficult sister-in-law in some family circles, but frankly, I don't care. Am I the a-hole? So, am I the a-hole for changing the locks on my sister-in-law and telling her she couldn't have her wedding at my house after she uninvited me from the wedding? Not the a-hole. She planned a wedding at your house and didn't even have the decency to include you because she was insecure? That's next-level entitlement. You did the right thing. If she wanted you out of her wedding, she should have been prepared to find another venue. Her behavior is ridiculous. Not the a-hole. I can't believe she tried to exclude you from your own home. You were more than generous by agreeing to host the wedding in the first place. She blew that chance by being petty and insecure. It's your house, your rules. Good for you for standing up for yourself. Definitely not the a-hole. Changing the locks was the best move you could have made. 
She treated you with no respect and didn't even appreciate the huge favor you were doing for her. Now she has to deal with the consequences of her actions. She sounds like a nightmare. Me, 31 male, and my now fiancé, 26 female, have been together now for the last five years. I proposed back in September right before our five year, and as you can tell, she said yes. Everyone on my side of the family was thrilled, while her side was not quite as excited. My fiancé is a very introverted, passive lady, which probably comes from her emotionally a mother. I am a very direct person, so her mother was careful with what she said around us because I would call her out on her behavior in front of the rest of the family, which is why she doesn't like me. As our years of dating went on, my fiancé became more confident in herself, finishing her master's, getting her dream job, making good money, and just happy for the first time in a long time. Her mother resents her for her accomplishments because she never did anything with her life. Married twice, never finished school, very self-centered, dead-end jobs, in debt she will never be able to pay back, and addicted to whatever pills she can find. Just to paint a picture for you. October hits now. Her mother demands that she throws the bridal shower since she is the mother of the bride. We were hesitant, but were told the aunts would help financially, so we said yes. One week later, we got a call saying everything was booked and taken care of. We were honestly shocked it was done so quickly and paid for, so we thanked her and put it out of our minds. Two weeks ago, we got a phone call from her father saying that her mother and aunts couldn't afford the deposit of $100 deposit. I know. When questioning why they lied to us, her mother would just keep repeating, it's your aunt's fault, while laughing. It's crazy. They tell us the party is paid for, and now we find out they can't even afford the bare minimum. I was upset, but my fiancé lost it. She had enough, so she ended up going dress shopping with my mother and sister instead of taking her own. From what my older sister told me, after they found her dress, she broke down and told my family what happened. She asked my mom to run her bridal shower because she trusted her. Of course, my mom said yes. She didn't talk to me about this beforehand, but I respect her decision and think she made the right call. One week goes by and we have calmed down enough to call her parents. We tell them they are no longer in charge of the shower and we have it covered. Her mother tried to play it cool and assured us they would try and have the deposit money by next week. We told her that my mother would be in charge of running it and could help her so she could still be a part of it. This is when things got nasty. Her mother started screaming that we are acting selfish and making a mistake. She hangs up and starts calling everyone on her side of the family. The aunts are just like the mother, so we knew things were going to get messy. Sure enough, social media posts talking about how bad I am for her started to pop up. I'm a piece of crap. My mother is a bee. I'm tearing the family apart. On and on it goes. My fiancé is getting texts and calls trying to get her to change her mind about the wedding, and they just won't stop. I'm a pretty cool-headed person, but I've had enough of this drama BS. We are seeing her parents tomorrow, and I'm ready to tear them a new one. I want to just dig into every nasty thing I can think of and tear them down, but I know I shouldn't. We haven't sent out invites yet, but we are ready to start crossing names off our list. Did we do the right thing? Did we jump the gun on changing who runs the shower? What would be the best thing to say to them tomorrow? How should we handle the super nasty relatives who won't even listen? Oh God, boundaries. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Have a talk with your fiancé beforehand to agree on what you both want her parents to do and how you want them to act going forward and present a united front. Tell the parents what you hope they will do and what they cannot do and set consequences for failure to follow through or act civilly. If you begin to yell, we will hang up the phone or walk out of the room. We will no longer interact with you while yelling. If nasty messages continue, we will block you on the platforms they are received until after the wedding. Establish clearly where the expectations are and where the lines will be, then back each other up. Nasty family shenanigans around the wedding are a real test of a relationship, so put extra effort into being kind to your fiancé in coming weeks, and ask that she do the same for you. Good luck. Update. I read some of the messages that aunts wrote to us and asked her mother if she found them appropriate. She remained silent. I asked her if she found her behavior appropriate. Again, silent. Any and all forms of conversation turned into her looking around the room, acting like everything was fine. Her father at least spoke with us and admitted they were in the wrong. 
As we were getting ready to leave, she told her mom that she felt that a bridal shower is a financial burden on the family and she won't have to worry about it. Told her to just try and save her money. She finally responded with a snarky, well, I can't financially buy you a wedding gift now either. Not like I was planning on it anyways. Without skipping a beat and off script from anything we spoke about, my fiancé responded with, You have one week to change your mind about removing you from the wedding list. If you don't, you are out of the wedding for good. And walked towards the car. It took me and her dad by surprise, but her mother had a true look of fear on her face. I think she got the wake-up call she needed. But we both agree we don't need the toxic crap from anyone, especially family. So, a little backstory. I, 33 female, have been helping out my younger brother James, 30 male, for the past six years. He didn't have enough money for an apartment rent on his own, and he didn't feel comfortable roommating with a stranger. So, we split my two-bedroom apartment. And it has helped me save so I can buy my own place soon. But he went through struggles, lost his full-time job, got really out of shape from just sitting at his computer all day. Thanks to the pandemic, the government paid him to sit at home for over a year. Now he is having trouble keeping a job and is just about broke. He is also the worst roommate ever, never cleans up or helps around the house at all. And he has been short or late with rent several times this year. I'm getting kind of fed up. I am getting married come the new year and feel it is time we go our separate ways. When I told him I was getting married and moving out eventually, he said, I would rather keep our situation and just move with you, split the rent three ways. I told him, not only do I not want to live with him anymore, but he is untrustworthy with rent, and we don't want to be stuck with a more expensive place if he can't afford his part. He got mad at that and is now being all huffy. Our mom claims he ranted to her that if I don't take him with me, he would be homeless. Mom doesn't want him moving back to her place either, but asked I take him with me, since she doesn't want him to be homeless. I am like, what? I'm not his keeper. It's his own fault for his situation, and I've been very forgiving. I could have kicked him out for all the times he was late on rent, and our own mom won't take him back, but she is asking me and my fiancé to look after him instead. How stupid is that? He is 30 years old, not a child, and I am not his mother. I am done looking after him as if he's my responsibility. I don't get how he thinks it's rational to demand I bring him with me when I am getting married and wanting to start my own life. Don't let him move in with you. He needs to be responsible for himself. If he ends up being homeless, that's his fault. You have given him plenty of warning. This is what happens when you raise a child to be a spoiled brat. He thinks everything is about him. The worst thing I read here is that he is 30. He is a grown man and if he is incapable of standing on his own by now, then he never will be. I have seen spoiled men living off their families into their 50s and they are just worthless. For the sake of your marriage and for your brother's sake, he will not grow unless he has to. Kick him out ASAP. Tell him he has 60 days and that's it. And if he is homeless, that's his fault, not yours. Good luck.